Welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Series. I'm your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking 10 things you should never say to a boat salesman. There's one specifically that we're going to get to at the very end, so let's jump in. The first one is, oh, I love this boat. I love it. It's perfect. When you're dealing with a salesperson and, and you want to negotiate a good price, you always want to make sure that in their mind, there is something about the boat that you're not 100% thrilled with. Otherwise, the psychology that goes to work on a salesperson is they think, cha-ching, big commission. I can quote them a little bit higher price or a lot higher price in some situations, and I know they love this boat. And I'm going to be able to take them to take them for a ride on the price. And most boat salespeople that I've met out in the world are great people. They're commissioned though, and they're incented to sell the boat for as high of price as they can, and they'll make a larger commission in some situations, in many situations. So you always want to let them know, hey, I like this boat. It's great, uh, but there's. And you can almost always find one or two things about a boat that you're not 100% in love with. Just say, ah, I, I don't love the color. Uh, I don't love uh, this right here. I don't love that it has that option or doesn't have this option. And just put a little doubt in their mind that, hey, this isn't 100% slam dunk. Price is going to come into it when we get down to it. The next is, hey, I've got my boat. I'm going to trade it. Um what happens is when you're dealing with the trade, and if you if you watch my how to trade a, a boat video, there's a game that goes on. It's kind of a shell game. And when that trade comes into it, the shell game begins, and you don't really know where the numbers are falling. So what happens is when they know there's a trade, they're going to price that boat higher in a lot of cases so instead of giving you a bigger discount, they're going to price that boat higher and they're going to give you a higher value for their trade, for your trade, than they typically would. Now, I go into the full detail on like a 15 minute video on how to how to get the best for your trade or something like that. Um, you can go watch that on the channel. But the reason you want to say, I'm not sure what I'm doing with the trade It'll make them be a little bit more honest. You can tell them, hey, I've got a boat. If you really want to hide that fact, you can. But I find it's it's not as valuable in the overall conversation. And just say, hey, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I may sell it outright. Uh, I, I've got somebody that may be interested in buying it. I've got a kid that I might give it to. You know, I'm not really sure. Um, but And I may trade it. So tell me what you would give for the trade. So tell me what that number looks like. Tell me what you would sell the boat for. And then you can negotiate on the price of the boat separate. You can negotiate on the price of the trade separate, what they're going to give you on their trade. And then you can make your decision. Maybe I'll have them broker it for me and just have them charge a fee. Uh, maybe I'll just sell it on my own if I've got the time and inclination and uh, put more money in my pocket. Maybe I will truly give it to a, my my kids or a, a nephew or a neighbor or, or somebody else, depending on what it is. Um, but now you've got a better idea of where the actual numbers are, and you can do some comparisons uh, versus having them, they call it overvalue. Um, there's an ACV, the actual cash value of a trade. That's what, in theory, they would buy that boat for cash. So, hey, I'll buy it for that because I, I'll buy it for 10 grand because I know I can sell it for, let's say, 13 grand and make a profit. Or I'll buy it for 50 grand because I know I can sell it for 63,000 and, and, and make a profit after I clean it up and do what I need to do. Um, so they may show you one number, the trade value that they show you on the paperwork, but when they're calculating their discounts off that sales price, they're using that actual cash value and making sure they make a, a proper profit. So just be careful with that one. <laughs> the next is, oh, I'm paying cash walking in and, and you're proud and you're excited that you're paying cash. I, I've, I, I sold boats for, for about five, six years and when a client would come in saying, hey, I'm paying cash, the couple things that happen in a salesperson's mind is this person's going to be difficult to deal with. 
because there's somewhat of an attitude when you can, it depends on how you say it, but somewhat of an attitude of, Hey, I'm so good. I'm going to drop down 50 grand cash and I'm going to make it a big deal. And you had had better, everything had better be perfect. And, and there's kind of a, uh, oh, this person's going to be difficult to deal with. They're going to have, you know, their expectations are going to be through the roof. But the other thing, and this is why it's most important is because now the dealer says, oh, I can't make money on financing. The dealers can make a significant amount of money on when you finance the boat by doing the loan through their own um, relationships. They can make thousands of additional dollars um, on a, an average boat price. So when you say, I'm paying cash, well, that money's out the window and they say, well, I guess we better try to make as much as we can on the actual margin on the boat. So if you are paying cash, just say, hey, yeah, we might finance a, we might finance a portion of it. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm doing there, but leave that option open that you may finance. They're going to assume that they can talk you into financing uh, if you're even considering it because most people, um, I think it's like 35% of the people pay cash um, and a majority of the people finance and when you're talking uh, boats bought through a dealership. So they can make that extra money and if you take that off the table of I'm paying cash, well, now it changes the dynamic of how they're going to price it and uh, the discounts that they may give you. So just let them know, hey, I might pay cash, but I might finance as well. Work up the numbers for me on financing so that I know what that would look like and I can make my decision. Now it's going to make them um, give you a good loan number, but also negotiate the boat sales price as if you were going to finance and as if they were going to make that extra thousand, two thousand dollars on the reserve uh, for doing the loan. Next is I'm ready to buy a boat today. Hey, we've got vacation planned next week and I want to get this boat so we're on the water for vacation. What happens? You put all the power in the salesperson's hands and they say, Great. We got this boat ready. We can have it ready for your vacation. It's only going to cost you a little bit more because now time is on their side. Um, time's against you. Your vacation is is every second it ticks away. Your vacation's getting closer, and that boat becomes more and more valuable, more and more important to you. And it puts the it puts the power in their hands that okay well that's fine if if you're that excited and this is the boat and you need it today um, or you need it next week the price is going to go up typically and they're not as incented to negotiate because they know you have a deadline they don't have a deadline they may have another buyer come in they've got you know sixty. 90, maybe even 180 days to sell that boat before the curtailment payments start and before it starts costing them money. So they're going to be less likely to negotiate down. The next thing is, oh, I just need my monthly payment to be under 500 bucks, under 300 bucks, under a thousand bucks. You just like buying a car is you want to avoid talking monthly payments and try to talk as much as possible about the total out the door price, OTD, out the door. That's going to include boat, motor, trailer, whatever are those components you're negotiating, sales tax, registration fees, all in. So when you're talking the out the door number, that's the final check that you need to write. Now, if you decide to finance, you can know what your what your monthly payment is and you should what fits into your budget but you don't talk about that number you say i want to keep my i want to keep my um, investment under 100 grand i want to keep my investment under 50 grand and yeah i think i might finance um, i haven't really decided yet but let me look at the numbers too if i were to finance it for and then you make the decision of what term you want it to now on boats hey they know most people will string out their boat loans 120 months, 180 months. If you're over, I think, 75000 they'll even go as much as 240 months, 20 years on a boat loan. Now, they know they can do that because boats tend to hold their value well. Uh, they takes very high credit, takes 10% down. 
but now you can make the decision of what you're comfortable stringing that payment out and, and they're negotiating the actual price of the boat and like I said, I like to negotiate on the out the door number. So you're including taxes, registration, any of the dealer fees that they might want to include in there. Um, and you're not negotiating on a number that's variable based on the interest rate, uh, based on the term, based on the down payment. Um, and you're dealing on something that's all right, more, more apples to apples comparison, uh, as I said previously. Now, this is one that, you know, it's, hey, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm loaded, you know, I, I live on the lake. In some cases, that's going to come out just from the course of conversation. But it gets into the mind of the salesperson that, oh, this person has a lot of money. And because of that, I'm going to charge them a higher price because I can make more on my commission. They're not strapped for cash. Uh, they're not on a budget because whatever, you know, you, you roll up in your, um, in your, uh, Bentley, uh, what, whatever, but all of those things go into play when the salesperson is pricing the boat. In a lot of cases, they have a lot of flexibility. So when I was selling boats, I had a pricing sheet, which said, you cannot sell this boat under this price without manager approval, but I could sell it for over, and I actually made a significant amount of that overage. If I sold it over that, it was called cost line. If I sold it over that cost line number, I would make a percentage of everything I sold it over. So if I sold it over an extra $2,000, I can make an extra $1,000 on that boat. And um, sometimes that would be more than the actual commission on the boat itself. So every time a salesperson meets a new prospect, they're sizing them up and they're, they're sizing their commission. Even, even the best ones do it. The, the best ones don't let it affect the way they treat you. Uh, they still try to do the best things for you, put you in the best boat, help you find the, the right one. But they're incented to sell it at a higher price in a lot of situations. So everything that you give them as, oh, it's it's only fair that I charge them more. They can easily afford it. It puts the ball in their court, and they're going to try to make more, and you're going to have to negotiate harder. So if you if you avoid those conversations, if you avoid making those statements of that's going to put you in that category of, hey, this person has a lot of money, I can charge them more, you're going to put yourself in a better situation to get a, a better deal overall. Next is... I don't want to waste your time. Now, I understand this, and, and there's a certain level of, hey, it's it's nice of you to do that if it's a super busy Saturday afternoon and, and you're not planning on buying a boat. But the way you want to phrase it is not, I, I don't want to waste your time, you know, leave me alone. Just say, hey, I'm not in the market to buy a boat today. I'm doing my research for future. You know, I'm going to buy a boat in six to 12 months or whatever your time frame is. And that way, the salesperson, and you can feel them out how they respond to this, but, oh, hey, I, that's fine. You know, be glad to help you out. If you want some space, if you just want to look, uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be sitting at my desk or I'll be over there. Come grab me. Be glad to help you out. You can size a salesperson up by the way they react to this. But don't say, I don't want to waste your time because then they're going to just kind of blow you off like you're never going to buy Hey, I just want to let you know, I'm not ready to buy today. I'm doing research. We're thinking about buying, um, you know, six months from now, three months from now. And now if they're helpful and they answer your questions, they give you some good advice. Now, you know, you've got a salesperson that you can trust a salesperson. That's going to be great to work with probably a dealer. That's going to be great to work with down the line as well. Um, but it's not wasting their time. That's how they make their money. They make their money by helping people buy the right boats um, for the lifestyle that they're looking. And they've got a lot of knowledge. Even though not all boat salespeople are true boaters, they may not do your have your boating style. They may have a different, a different thought about what the right things are and, and their different opinions. But 
they do have a lot of knowledge. They've got a lot of knowledge about the brands that they carry, hopefully. Not always, but hopefully. They've got a lot of knowledge about the local waterways, hopefully. They've got contacts and connections. Uh, and, and so having a good relationship with the with a good salesperson uh, can be very, very valuable. Uh, but you just want to do it the right way. Now, this is one that I, I personally, uh, especially if it's on the phone, if you call up a salesperson and say, Hey, I'm looking at this boat. Give me your best price. Well, that is very, very off-putting to a salesperson because one, they have no idea if it's even the right boat for you. They have no idea where you're located. Um, and, and most new boats you can't sell out of your own territory. Uh, there's rules against that. They're in the contract. So um, I can only sell in this market area, uh, usually defined by zip codes. And I, I can't deliver a boat and there's a penalty or maybe the other dealer in that market area that it gets delivered to gets a percentage of the profit. So that approach of just give me your best price, it tells the salesperson that the only thing that matters to you is price and the customer service, the quality of the boat, is it the right boat, that there's no value in that for you. And most salespeople will just shut you down completely. And you've lost out on any of the relationship and you probably haven't even put yourself in a position to get the best price um, because you're probably going to piss them off and they're going to give you a price that really isn't their best price because they know as soon as they say that you're going to click and you're going to call the next dealer. Um, and if you're really going to make your decision on price, then, you know, you're going to buy from a crappy dealer. You're going to have a bad, a bad situation. What my recommendation would be is talk to them and say, hey, you know, I'm real serious about this. Um, what would you actually sell it to me for? So now you're not dealing with MSRP. You're not dealing with the first price that they're going to quote. Because like I said, they typically are going to have a, a pricing list that gives them the lowest number they can sell it without manager approval. And a manager is never going to give them a number um, from somebody that just called in. Now, if you're getting down into negotiation, um, in our, our first time boat buyer Academy, we've got what's called the magic money saving method. And it gives you a much better way to get this number and being very friendly and polite and maintaining the relationship. And it works 10 times better than give me your best price. That is like just the blunt slapping somebody on the head approach. Um, ours is much more subtle that we have the magic money saving method and the other, uh, six dealership negotiation secrets, um, that are more insider. You can check that out at usboatexpo.com slash, uh, Academy, but give me your best price is going to backfire 99 out of a hundred times. Um, so what you want to do is you just, you want to have a conversation. You want to, you want to find out. Is this the right boat? And then as you get down into the conversation and you start talking about price, there's just an easy three steps that you go through to make sure that you get the best price. Um, and it's just a series of questions that you go through real super easy, works incredibly well, uh, and, and it'll save you money. So you can check that out. But don't use, hey, give me your best price. Um, it's just not going to work. Next is, oh, my God, this boat's perfect. Um, this is exactly what I've been searching for. Um, I've, I've been looking for a 22 footer with the 200 Yamahas in this color and this layout. Well, just like the, I love this boat. This is the exact boat I'm looking for. Well, what happens? That salesperson says, cha-ching. I know, I know I can sell this boat for more because if they've been looking for it for a long time, they finally found it guess what? They're not going to walk away from this over an extra thousand bucks, an extra 2000 bucks, whatever price they think they can get. And it's going to put you in a really bad negotiation position. You can say, Hey, I'm looking for this boat. Oh, this is, this was on my list of boats that I really like. Oh, this is real close to what I've been looking for. And now you've got a little bit of a I can walk away positioning um, that's going to help you in the negotiation process. <laughs> Next is, 
I don't know anything about boats. Um, now, first of all, you should never have to say that. We have got over 150 videos on this channel designed specifically so you don't ever have to say, I don't know anything about boats. Go watch the videos on pontoons, on center consoles, on cruisers, on deck boats, on bow riders, on horsepower, on propulsion, uh, on terminology, on how to work with the dealer, how to buy a private seller. There's never a situation where you shouldn't know. Now, you may not know everything. We've got the First Time Boat Buyers Academy. We've got the U.S. Boat Expo. we got the, the free toolkit, um, the free seven-day pass to that expo at usboatexpo.com. Um, you can get the Boat Buyers Toolkit, boatbuyersecretweapon.com slash toolkit. Don't go in knowing nothing. Do your research before you walk into that dealership. Have a baseline and let the dealer know, let the salesperson know, Hey, I've been researching this stuff. Um, I don't know it all. I've got some questions, some local stuff, but don't go in there just giving up all control and saying, I don't know anything about boats and putting it all on the salesperson. Because what's going to happen is if you get a bad salesperson, they're going to maybe put you in the wrong boat uh, and, and start pushing you in a direction that's not right for you, but it's better for their commission. Um, the other thing that happens is, they might say, oh, crap, this is this person's not really going to buy a boat. If they don't know anything, um, they haven't done any research, they're not serious about boats. They're just coming in here to waste our time. It's bad positioning for you in a lot of different ways. And when you go in and you say, I've been doing research, I've been watching these videos at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com, I've been watching these other channels, I've been doing research and I've got a pretty good idea and I've got some good questions, Questions are in the toolkit. Questions are in the Boat Buyers Academy. Um, there's a lot of uh, questions that come up in the U.S. Boat Expo. When you go in and you start asking good questions, it puts the salesperson in a position of, oh, okay, now we've got a respectful relationship back and forth. They know some things. Um, they're asking good questions, and they're going to be on their toes when you get to that negotiation stage. What's going to happen? They're going to be more respectful. They're going to they're going to have that that more equal relationship, and you're going to be able to walk out of there with a better price. So again, check out that toolkit. Check out the U.S. Boat Expo. You can get a free seven day pass. USBoatExpo.com. You can subscribe to the channel. Like I said, we're always releasing videos at least one a week, and we also have over 150 videos on the channel, all educational to help you find the right right boat and not make a mistake. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.